speak. Uh, check, baby, check, baby. One, two, three. Sounds juicy. Uh, it was juicy. <laughs> the only pressure is in the bottle. No grape smugglers? Budgie smugglers? That, that's down under. Oh, down under. Welcome back to Talk and Taste, coming at you from Tokyo, I'm Max. And I am Timothy. And we're gonna talk and taste about Japan, about spirits, about so many interesting things. In fact, today, we're talking about the club. In the club, I don't think it's that club though. I don't think it's that club. We're actually going to talk yeah. about Japanese hostess clubs. That club. Yeah, so now this is a really interesting topic because this is quite different from most other parts of the world, particularly so other different. parts of Asia, yeah. right? So in Japan, you have different types of clubs called hostess clubs, mama-san clubs, there's things called kabakura, girl's bar, snacks. They're yeah. everywhere. Any small town in Japan will have something along these lines. The most basic thing is the snack, and yeah. you will hear bad karaoke coming from it. Mm. It's basically, you don't, necessarily, you don't need to be a member, mm. anybody can walk in, there'll probably be some basic charge. Yes. You sit at the counter, the, uh, the mama will serve you something and probably engage you in some karaoke. Yes. It's just like a basic bar, but with some social engagement. That's sure. like the baseline. Sure. Then you have the hostess club. Now these can range from extremely expensive in places like Ginza, where you go and you pay a set fee. So I mean, this might be two, three, five hundred dollars an hour. So essentially in these clubs, what you do is you go in there and you pay them to serve you drinks and talk to you. So you have obviously, uh, you can have some kimono clad uh, ladies who are very refined of course, or you might have them wearing quite an exotic uh, dress, you know, quite over the top and glamorous. That's more like the kawakura. Right? Correct, so depending on which genre you end up going into, you go in there, they will serve you drinks and they will talk to you. And they might change throughout. So you might have different uh, ladies come and speak to you and you might say to yourself, why am I paying somebody to talk to me? And really, this isn't the fact that you're paying somebody to talk to you. This is somewhere where you're going, where you're having somebody create the mood for you. So it's often used in business circumstances where you might have clients that you're taking to show a good time and you go there and you have the staff and these are professional servers and talkers per se so they will create a lovely atmosphere it's a very structured way in which to create an environment where everybody's having fun and you know drinking some alcohol and uh, just having a good time and it might be the difference between getting that business deal done or not. So that's why they're very, very popular, but they can be very, very expensive. We should, we should specify for people who are, haven't been to Japan, this is not, this is not prostitution at all. It's just like a relationship of... Yeah, you can't touch. This is a no touch policy. It's very different to other parts of say Southeast Asia where there's very different types of hostess clubs. Whereas this is a situation where you're there just for the company and just have the service and the drinks poured for you. So that's very, very important. Because we're talking about hostess clubs in Japan, the most obvious thing to go to today is champagne. champagne. Now, what I wanted to do with the champagne today, I wanted to bring in basically the most popular, the world's most loved champagne, and a bottle of this is opened every second somewhere in the world. That's how popular this champagne is. Everybody knows, brands. the world's most popular champagne, you don't even have to think about it, Moët de Chandon. Well, it is Moët de Chandon, and it is the champagne of success and glamour and since glamour. 1743. So, for viewers out there who perhaps aren't really uh, used to opening a bottle of champagne, please make sure you're covering the cork with your finger from the start until the finish. If that baby goes flying, you could seriously do some damage. There's a lot of pressure in these bottles. About six atmospheres. Exactly, exactly. And, and as we like to say, the only pressure is in the bottle. Exactly. So, a little bit of a nice shoot sound is what you're looking for. Uh, you don't want to pop the bottles unless you're in the club. Mm -hmm. So Max, I know that that's uh, maybe your alley. But let's do a little bit of a quick tasting on the Moet de Chandon. We are tasting Moet Imperial, which of course is the flagship. It is yep. the, you know, it equals, I mean, when you think about this champagne, you just think this is what champagne is. It's also the champagne that almost everybody, the first time they have real champagne, yep. it's probably Moet de Chandon, right? It's uh, ubiquitous, it's mm. loved the world over, and it's just such a well-made champagne. Yep. It's so well-balanced, 
some nice white flowers off the top. Of course, that lovely citrusy character you get with champagnes. There's a touch of sort of grapefruit. There's some apple, freshly cut mm -hmm. apple in there. Uh, there's some fresh sort of stones, some crushed stones and mineral. But also uh, on the sort of the finish, there's that toastiness that you're there's getting. The, the lovely mm. toastiness, because I believe this is on the lees for, what, 24 months? Mm. Yeah, so lees oh. is, the, is the dead yeast cells that sit in the champagne bottle after you've finished uh, fermenting it. Max. Yeah. I want to introduce a bit of a, uh, a new system. So I've, since we started talking taste, I've been stopped on the street a few times uh, with various comments that people have given me. Uh, like, hey, get away from my children. And then they usually say, you know, I love that you guys are tasting different things, but perhaps you could come up with a scoring system. That's true. Yeah. Objective. Science. Exactly. So. What I thought we'd do is, I'm not sure, this is also a comment that I've had is, did you realize that your talk and taste logo looks like a pair of Speedos? What? No. Yeah, that's some of the comments. I was quite shocked. Who or, would say that? Or, if I was in America, a Speedo? I, I believe you'd say, looks like a banana hammock to me. So, we've come up with a scoring system that involves our logo and, well, I guess we're having to call it the Speedo Rating. It offers support for the different brands of the world. Yeah, so we've got our pink Speedo Rating. The maximum Speedos you can get is five. I'm going to do the score for today on the Moet de Chandon, Moet Ambriel. And my score for this is four and a half pink Speedos out of five. Didn't I think go for five. I didn't go for five because I feel like we want to reserve that for something truly out of this world. No, we do have this to keep in great. mind that Moet this also makes like a grand vintage. Correct. And we have Prestige yeah. Champagne as well that we'll get into tasting, you know, other brands, maybe yeah. Dom Perignon, Krug, etc. So this I'm giving 4.5 pink Speedos out of five. I think half means maybe it's the front or the back of the Speedo. Whichever covers less. Yes. So 4.5 pink speedos out of five uh, for the Moet de Chandon, which is an excellent score. Now, if I can, quickly go into T-cubed, Timothy's top tips. So, Timothy's top tip for today. I am often criticized for being a little bit too obsessive about glassware. Glassware, right? So, the champagne, is usually associated with the flute, which is very thin, which is, you know, nice to look at. It's great to see the bubbles and it's great for parties as well. You know, maybe pour a little bit less, it goes around a bit further. But if you're really wanting to taste your champagne, then throw away the flute and use a wine glass. A white wine glass like this, maybe something for like a Riesling or a Sauvignon Blanc is perfect, but something that's a little bit bigger. Because what you'll notice is you get lovely aromas, lovely flavor characteristics. It allows the wine to breathe a little bit more and it's gonna be so much more enjoyable. So my top tip for today Today is drinking champagne, use a white wine glass. Is it time for uh, Max Facts? It's always time for Max Facts! <gasps> so I have a number of Max Facts for you today. One, as you perhaps noticed, we've been saying Moet et Chandon. Mm. The real French pronunciation of the brand is not Moet, though of course it's entirely acceptable. It is actually Moet. I have so many facts about Moet. For example, we said it's the world's most popular, most loved champagne. They also have a, a big cellar, massive cellar, 28 kilometers of cellar. So the fact that if you go and visit, you might have to ride a bicycle around. I live in Tokyo, so I like to think of it as the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama, right? And that's really, really far. This is a big city. That's the distance of champagne cellars that Moet has. And that is a max fact. I think it might be time for taking the money. I mean, oh. take, take my money. Uh, do the gesture, money. do the gesture again, the same one. Uh, what was it? It's time for take my money. So I don't really have to sell this to you because frankly, everybody knows it, everybody loves it. Drink this with a friend, show up at a party with this, everyone will expect your choices. It is the beauty, the diversity, the complexity of champagne in a bottle right here. Moet, the world's most loved champagne, success and glamour. You see it at the Oscars, you see it at the Caesars, you see it at those sporting events. 
Moet Imperial, the champagne of emperors, really bringing the magic of champagne to the world and to you. If you haven't had it, you should. If you've had it recently, have it again. You'll find something new. You'll never be disappointed. I like how you said, if you show up to a party with it, of course, we want to preface that by saying it should be a party you've been invited to because... Honestly, I think if you show up with a bottle of this and you're not invited, you will be invited in. So I think we are done for this episode of Talk and Taste. Do we? I, I want to cover just one more thing, uh, which is the fact mm. we talked about mm. hostess clubs. Yes. There are also oh, host clubs. Okay. And this is something that kind of blew my mind. Where do the hostesses go after work? Mm. They very often go to the host clubs. Mm. So the host clubs will start at like maybe midnight or 2 a.m. And it's the same kind of thing but it's for hostesses or other women, and I've never understood it. If you know what the magic of hosts club, host clubs are, please tell me. In fact, the most uh, popular host in Japan or well-known host in Japan is a guy named Roland, and he chose a name with bunches of R's and L's, so it's already hard to pronounce in Japan. Tell me, why do people like Roland? I want to understand. I think we're finally done with this episode. It's been a pleasure. Uh, nice seeing you. Nice being seen by you. And we hope that we will that we will be joined by you again for some more talk and taste. We have some good episodes lined up, I think. Cue the ukulele. There it is. Get rid of your flute and try a white wine glass. If you're popping in the club, you better bring your cash. Take it to a friend's and then you'll be set. And the correct pronunciation is Moet. Talk and take.